Upstart is now officially a public company. Shares are up about 30% out of the gate, not quite that 100% pop, which is, we, we know, a double-edged sword. How are you feeling about the debut? Well, it's great. I mean, I don't know, going through this process is like, I'm sort of like being a parent, like an amazing experience, but not, not sure I want to do it again, to be honest. <laughs> On that note, uh, Airbnb and DoorDash, as I'm sure you were following, went public last week, you know, doubling out of the gate, uh, but then now this conversation about the money left on the table, um, you know, the shares are pulling back. How much were you watching that and how much did that, you know, factor into your final decisions about price? Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not real like a big believer that, you know, a, a pop is a really bad thing. I mean, I, I, I kind of think, um, you know, I know there's different viewpoints on this. For, for most of us, you just kind of want to get through this process. Um, we're a company that's generating cash, so we're not exactly as sensitive as others might be of getting the last dollar out of the process. Um, but frankly, just getting through it before the end of the year, you know, getting to focus back on the business in 2021 is, is really the big win for us. Roblox and Affirm delayed their IPOs, uh, you know, according to our sources, to get a better handle on this crazy market. Did you at all think like maybe we should wait until 2021? Uh, you know, we were ready to go. It felt like that thing, you know, we had started this process over a year ago and it was really interrupted by COVID. So we've been in this process where I think a lot of us at the company feel like we've had two jobs for the last 15 months. So by no means did we have any interest in postponing it till next year. Dave, your technology helps make loans happen. Talk to us about the demand you're seeing in the pandemic, given that there are so many people out there who are hurting. Yeah, 2020 obviously has been a, a really difficult year and, you know, sort of assumption going in that credit would be abysmal, it would be a disaster. But what has really happened is, um, you know, maybe through the government stimulus or through other efforts, uh, the consumer's done actually relatively well through this year. The, you know, their um, savings levels are up, their credit card balances are down, their spending is down, which generally from a financial perspective is good for the consumer. We're also really happy to, to, to say that AI lending has proven itself. You know, it's really as if to, to our bank partners in, in, with respect to the performance of the loans, it's kind of like COVID never happened. The model really did particularly well despite all the disruption of 2020. So should investors, given your place in the process, should they be at all concerned about the risk you're taking on? You know, obviously technology, and I know AI is helping um, make a lot of these loan connections, but can some things fall through the cracks? We don't actually take credit risk ourselves. We provide the technology to the banks who, who are the lenders. So we don't, you know, 97-ish percent of our revenue is fees paid to us by banks to help them originate credit better. So we don't have the direct exposure, but for sure, our, you know, our technology performing well through COVID or any type of environment is vitally important. That's actually our, our proposition to the bank is we can help you originate Credit that, credit that performs better, that is more automated, a better product for the consumer, et cetera. So tell us about the technology and how that AI proposition works. Yeah, I mean, it's like other AI systems. You have an enormous amount of data that you gather over time, training data, and you are developing machine learning algorithms. And it's very analogous to you know, autonomous cars and what Waymo or Tesla are doing there, or language translation or other things. It requires a, a lot of algorithms that really is a very specific type of talent to develop. It's enormous training data and, and variety of data. And the system just learns and gets a little smarter every week and every month. And when we say smarter, what that means is, you know, we can improve more people at lower interest rates. So it's a better product for the consumer as each month goes by. And so it has that notion of AI in it, which is just perpetually getting better, learning on its own. And of course, we're kind of upgrading the software and et cetera. And, and that makes it a, a better product for the consumer. But just as importantly, it's a better product for our bank partners too. They can they kind of have a more profitable, more reliable product, but at the same time, it's also a better product for the consumer. So who are your competitors? Are Prosper and Lending Club, uh, you know, direct competitors? And what do you have on the competition? Yeah, almost on the on the consumer side of our business, almost anybody who's offering credit to the consumer in some sense is, is a competitor. Um, but, you know, they all kind of look the same to us because they use a traditional approach of credit score based lending where they all just kind of in many ways um, are similar. And, and we've built a model that's so different that um, whether there's 
five competitors or 50 or 100. They, they, again, we've built a, a very proprietary system that has a lot of advantages. On the other side, we have competitors that also serve banks with technology, which is a completely different world. So we have this interesting thing where we're kind of both a consumer and an enterprise company wrapped in one, and that's somewhat unusual, I should say. So now that you are a public company, what are your plans in 2021 and how does this help you uh, accomplish more of your goals? Well, for sure, you know, first year as a public company is super important and um, we're going to be really focused and, and thankful to get the event behind us and focused on the business. But, you know, for us, it's we're, we're a growth company, so we need to push the AI further. We're pushing from personal loans where we started now into automotive lending. Um, which is another whole category where millions of people are paying far much, far too much for their auto loans, and we can help with that. So it's really expanding the category as quickly as we can. When when you have like an AI system at your core, you just want to go fast because you have a you have a data advantage that you can keep building on if you're smart. And um, you know, there's not there's not others trying to build what we're doing today, but eventually they will. So 2021 is just really about being up in full stride, and certainly delivering as a public company.